good morning, good morning, good morning, and thank you for tuning in this morning. My name is Shakisha Edmonds, and I am here with Women Overcoming Weight Loss Part 6, and I know that's going to throw some people off, but it's Part 6 because I put two parts together, and I I needed I should have made you guys aware of that. But first, let me introduce um, Women Overcoming Weight Loss, Part Six. Welcome. Good morning. Welcome to Women Overcoming Weight Loss. It is truly a pleasure to have you all to join author, evangelist, life coach, Shakisha Etnis for a 12-step, 12-session weight loss coaching webinar. So, again, thank you. For the next, I guess we have about a week or two weeks left um, of the four weeks. We will be meeting on Mondays and Fridays. And I would like to apologize because Monday, Friday that just passed and the Monday before, and the Monday before that, we did not meet. So, again, I apologize. Um, Just some things has happened in my schedule, and I wasn't able to get online and do the webinar. So I do apologize. But again, we will we will meet on Mondays and Fridays, and from 7:30 p.m. to 8:30 p.m. for lecture, and 8:30 to 9 Eastern Standard Time for Q and A. It will be most helpful if you if you have your um, Women Overcoming book, Weight Loss book series, which is the book the workbook and the journal. But if not, again, we're just going to continue on um, working out of our notebook that's for this topic. Again, I thank you for setting aside this time to invest in you, in yourself, and I promise you, you will be glad. Let's begin doing our work. That is the workbook, and I really cannot wait till you guys get your workbook. Because I promise you, this this book is is really good. It's really good. It's going to help you get to the root of your problem. It will help you to focus and I mean, really get to know yourself. And it's just it's just a helpful book. It's, it's a workbook that is why it has truly blessed me. So again, this is just introducing you to the workbook. Our topic today is forgiveness, and we've covered uh, the interview process, mirror therapy, acceptance, serenity prayer, um, and exposure, and now we're on forgiveness. And to forgive is to pardon or to overlook. Is basically to pardon and to overlook, to overlook. And I love, I I just love the simplicity of saying overlook because forgiveness seems so hard, but when we make it simple, it 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 is not as hard as we think it is. It's hard, I don't get me wrong, but it's not as hard as we think it is. So forgiveness is to simply overlook. This is a three-part series, and I'm going to first start with forgiveness toward others. So the first uh, part of the three-part series we're going to discuss is forgiveness toward others. Let's talk about it. Ask yourself the following questions that I'm going to that I'm going to call out aloud. Please write them down as I read them out aloud. 
out loud. In order to get the right answers, you must ask the right questions. So just bear with me a little bit on forgiveness. This is, I'm going to try to make it as brief as I can, but I'm just going to be honest with you. This is a very, very, uh, a very important topic for me, and it's a touchy topic right now. So I thank God for the time that I, I was allowed to go through some things, you know, even before I started speaking on this topic because, my God, forgiveness is, is, it's really, it's really big. But the simplicity of things always seems to work, not making things so complicated. You know, the strategy used here has been phenomenal. Hatred doesn't hate the hated. It hates the hater. Hatred doesn't hurt the hated. It hurts the hater. I'm so sorry. That is a statement that Bishop Dale C. Brahma he always says that hatred doesn't hurt the hated, it hurts the hater. So to forgive is to have control over your life and not allow someone else to control you. We present this simply as to overlook their offense. A lot of people become bitter, which the bitterness works more internally and becomes sickness in our bodies. So this is where women learn to ask for forgiveness and make amends, forgive others and their offense, their offenses toward them, because though you forgive the person, the offense can come back again through another individual. So we teach to forgive both the offense and the offender, so you will be immune to it. It's most important to forgive yourself for the past, mistakes, and poor judgments. So this is an area where we peel to heal. We peel we, it, we, to come off, to strip off, to exfoliate the hurt, the resentment, the jealousy, the bitterness, the hate, the insecurity, the shame, the guilt, and the anger. Exfoliate to peel off, to remove or come off. It, it could be layers of something, but, but you just, you just, you just, the forgiveness is a process. It's a process. May I say that again? It's a process. It's a process, my God, because you people, people will, you will forgive a person, and guess what? They will come back and do the same exact thing. The same individual will constantly do the same thing, and though you forgive them, it doesn't mean that they're going to change. So you got to really get to, with this thing with forgiveness, you have to really, really understand that though you forgive someone, it doesn't mean they're going to change. So to forgive, you know, you, you, you forgive yourself and others in order to be set free and in order for someone else to be free. You know, when you set someone free, you become free. So I, I, oh, this I, I know this thing is about to. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. So as I said, I was going to read out some questions that I wanted you to um, uh, just ask yourself. And if you can't write these questions down, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, we adore your holy name. I love you, Lord. I thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your favor that rests upon us, God. I ask you, Father God, to forgive me, Lord Jesus, for all my sins, Lord God. Forgive me, Lord God, if I offended you or another, Lord God. Forgive me, Heavenly Father, and teach me how to forgive others, Lord God. And most importantly, Lord God, teach me how to forgive myself and accept the forgiveness that you have extended toward me and allow me to extend that same forgiveness to someone else, God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for using a wretch such as myself because only you know that I still struggle in this area of, you know, unforgiving toward other people and I'm trying to get better, God, because this is not something that's easily done, Lord God, but I thank you, Lord God, that you have taught me that if I forgive 
I forgive someone else, you will forgive me as well. So, God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. And I ask you, Lord God, to decrease me and increase you, Heavenly Father. Let your perfect will be done in me, through me, to me, and for me, Father. Even as I'll be a blessing, God, allow me to allow you to bless me even during this 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 uh, form of being able to reach other people, Lord God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, and I give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Lord God. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. So even as I begin to ask these questions out loud, I'm going to ask you to write them down if you can. I'm going to go brief. I'm going to be brief, but I'm going to go as slow as I can for you to be able to write these questions down. So forgiveness toward others is part one of the three-part series of of Session 5. Ask yourself the following questions. Who, number one, who do I hold resentment against? Who do I hold resentment against? Who? Who do I hold resentment against? Why? Number two is why do I hold resentment against them? Number two, why do I hold resentment against them? Number three, did they hurt me intentionally? Mm. Did they hurt me intentionally? Or was it by accident? But the focus is, did they hurt me intentionally? Are they aware that they hurt me? Are they aware that they hurt me? Have I told them what they did to me? Ah, That's very important. Have I told them what they did to me? Have I expressed how it affected me, our relationship, and the relationship with others? My God. So number one is who do I hold resentment against? Number two is why do I hold resentment against them? Number three is, did they hurt me intentionally? Four is, are they aware that they hurt me? Five is, have I told them what they did to me? And six, very, very, very important, have I expressed how it affected me, our relationship, and my relationship with others? Because what you must understand is, when someone hurts you and someone uh, disrespects you or treats you a certain way, that hurt does not just uh, affect you and affect the relationship with them. It affects the relationship with other people because now you're, you're – uh, uh, quick to defend yourself with others when they when they do the same thing that the person has already done to you, or if the person is criticizing you, you're quick. You have a quick defense mechanism that 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 comes up because you've been through this and you haven't healed through this. Ah, hallelujah, sweet Jesus! You've been through it, but you haven't healed through it. So number seven is how long have I held this against them? Number eight, how long have I hurt? How long have I been hurting? Number nine, when was the last time I spoke with them? My God. Number nine, when was the last time I spoke with them? Ten, when I see them, how do I feel? Have you ever had had resentment or, or, you know, unforgiveness? Or unforgiveness towards someone, and guess what? Every time they come in your atmosphere, your whole attitude changes. You know why? Because they have power over you. They have power over you. My God, how long have I heard it? When was the last time I spoke with them? When I see them, how do I feel? That's number 10. Number 11, when seeing them, do I get angry all over again? Woo! My God, when seeing them, when they're in my presence, do I get angry all over again that if it just happened? Yes, I've been there. I've been there. And and sometimes I'm still there. My God, do my anxieties take over? That's number 12. Number 13, do I not? 
trust others due to this event taking place in my life. That's what I just explained. Because just because one person did it, sometimes we 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 do we have a way of protecting ourselves. We think we're protecting ourselves. My God. My God, but do I not trust others due to this event taking place in my life? Number 14, where did it happen? Because everything happens in the environment. So me just getting in the environment that, that it happened, it could bring a memory that can trigger my emotions all over again, even without the individual being in my space. Because I'm in the environment that it happened. And number 15, when I visit this place, does it bring back memories? Are they painful? My God. 16, do I talk about it to, to myself or others? Number 17, what suggestions do others give me? Is it good or bad advice? Because, see, you have to be very careful about who you're speaking with about your, your problems or about the, the uh you know, different issues that you may have towards another another person because that individual can have something going on similar to your situation, maybe not with that person, but with someone else. And then they give you bad advice because this is this is the way that they've been going about it. It haven't it haven't made any it haven't uh changed the situation but again they feel protected. So they give you the advice that 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 they only I'm not gonna say they only have but they that they use and they give you the same advice and guess what? It's bad advice. Or can someone give you or is it good advice? So number eighteen, do I love the person that hurt me? Now that's a good one. Do I love the person that hurt me? Mm. Woo shut it in a heat up I'm the heat. That's a real good one. Because though they hurt me, I love them so much. But I just can't seem to get past what they've done to me and how they make me feel. But I do love them. My God. Do you like or dislike me? You know, my mother always said, you know, oh, I love you, but I don't like you. <laughs> so I, so I, I, I ask you, uh, number 20 is, do you like their ways? Because, see, sometimes we mistaken not liking them with not liking their ways. I may, I may like them as an individual, but I don't like their ways. I don't like their habits. Why do I want to befriend them? No, do, no, do I want to befriend them again? I'm sorry. Do you want to befriend them again? Why or why not? Because sometimes when you forgive someone, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be in a relationship with them afterwards. Because it could be an unhealthy relationship. So do I want to befriend them again? Why or why not? Good question. You know, words, Words are much like a fist, depending on how you use them. Words are much like a fist, depending on how you use them. Weight is nourished by unhealthy complaints and discouraging words, which help bring on tormenting thoughts. Weight is nourished by unhealthy complaints and discouraging words, which helps bring on tormenting thoughts. My God. So someone can say something, thank you, Lord Jesus, can say something to me and 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 it can it can be so discouraging that it, it, it brings on tormenting thoughts within within myself because of what they say. You know, I remember a long time ago, I used to say, I would rather my mother whoop me than to, than to uh, curse me out because her words 
hurt it worse than the belt. And guess what? I do my children the same way. You know, and, 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 and it's sad to say that, but I picked up something that I've hated. My habit, when it come down to when I get angry, the things that come out of my mouth, sometimes if I could just have a zipper or a lock to just lock my mouth closed just to get past the pain and the hurt, because I know oh so well how painful someone's words can be. And even as you see this 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 picture with this man, you know, basically yelling at her, saying whatever he's saying to her, and his fist coming straight out of his mouth, punching her in her face. And we feel like that sometimes. Even Proverbs 18 and 21 from the New Living Translation reads, the tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. My God. When I say that convicted me this morning, why am I speaking on, you know, how did I go straight to this? Because a lot of us, we're still holding resentment against just something somebody said to us. And it hurt us. And guess what? It's some things we said to others that hurt them as well. My Jesus, this here is, whoo, my God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Mm. Thank you, God. So if we can just get past, past the things we've heard and, you know, just say, you know what, God? I know this person said some things to me that that has hurt me in the past. And I, what I need you to understand is, listen to this. And this just came to me. Thank you, God. But sometimes the things that hurt you in the past has hindered you in your presence and in your future. It's a hindrance. And that's why we have to come to a place of forgiveness so we can be free. We can be free. Amen. So words are much like a fist, depending on how you use them. So we have to be very careful on how we use our words. Do you believe in restoration? Restoration is the act or process of returning something to its original condition by repairing it. My God, restoration is the act or process of returning something to its original condition by repairing it. Do you believe God can restore people and relationships? Hallelujah, Lord God. God said he is a restorer. He's a restorer. So do you believe God can restore you, restore people in your life and relationships? Is the relationship worth being restored? Is the person worth being restored? Are you worth being restored? Even as I'm looking at this picture and I see this lady sitting here with pills and it says, how can I forgive? Can I forgive when it hurts so much? Oh, I know what it feels like to be hurt so many, so many times by people that you love. I'm talking family. Family. Family alone. I've endured more endured more hurt in my family than I have on the outside. And it, oh Jesus, thank you, Lord God. Can I forgive when it hurts so much? How can I forgive? How can I 
to hear. Do you believe God can re- restore people in relationships? Yes, I know he can. I'm a living witness. He can. Are all relationships worth being restored? No. Is that person worth being restored? Yes. Are you worth being restored? Yes. My God. Because some relationships are seasonal. But it's good to be able to go back and say, I forgive you. Or will you forgive me? Because in that, we're restored. Even in that. My God. So I really hope you ponder on these these questions, and I really hope you're doing your homework <laughs> because, whoo, Jesus, Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. my God. Who is the prisoner here? When you do not forgive, you become the prisoner. In your own prison. To forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover that the prisoner was you. By Lewis Smith, I think that's his name. That was so powerful to me. To forgive is to set the prisoner free and discover that the prisoner was you. So imagine you having this hate towards somebody. They're not around you. You don't see them. You don't talk to them. But if somebody just mentioned their name, it does something to you because you're, you're the prisoner. You're the one locked up. They're free. But you're in your own prison. Let's get free today. How do I forgive? By opening your heart to forgive who did it to you. Open your heart to forgive who did it. Open your heart to forgive who did it. Let the childhood memories go. If you're looking at this picture, this man, he's holding his head. But do you see the ba- the, the little boy in the background? And, I, and that just represented to me. You know, even as I see a man on the left-hand side, it's almost like my father did this to me when I was a kid or I endured this. You know, I seen this. I went through this. How can I forgive when it hurts so much? You know how? Instead of pressing rewind, fast forward. Because every time you rewind, you go into your past. When you fast forward, guess what? You're, you're, you're going into your future. Yes, they hurt you. Yes, you are struggling with, with holding on to, uh, to resentment and, and things that you haven't forgiven. And guess what? It's hindering you. And you're the one that's in jail. You're the one, the prisoner, not not the not the party that that did it to you. The greatest power you will ever experience is the power of forgiveness. Even as I read this, I came across this from Nelson Mandela. As I walked out the door toward the gate that would lead me to my freedom. I knew if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I'll be in prison. I'll still be in prison. As I walked out the door toward the gate that would lead me to my freedom, I knew if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I'd still be in prison says Nelson Mandela. My God. Yes, they did it. He, I don't deny that. They did it to us. They did it. Hey, it was
was done to me, it was done to you. But I forgive my offender and their offense. We must learn to forgive the offender and their offense. My God, how? By opening up our heart, my God, to, you know, you, you, thank you, Lord Jesus. Even as I say in the book of Women Overcoming Weight Loss, and this book is truly about forgiveness, but I give an exercise, and you know I have an exercise for you today. But I give an exercise even before the book, you know, before you read the book. And this is how, this is how, as you open your heart to forgiveness, this is how you forgive when it hurts so much. So you don't become the prisoner in your own prison. Number one, you list the things you want to lose. Before making your list, ask God to bring those things to your remembrance. You may want to lose weight in the following categories, physical, emotional, or mental weight. But be honest so this can help you. That's number one. Number two, make a list of the things you want to be delivered from. Make a list of the things you want to be delivered from. Number three, write the things you want to be forgiven for. Because there's things that you've done that you want to be forgiven for. And we'll get there, but I'm just giving you this so you can know how you how to how to uh, forgive when it hurts so bad. Write the things you want to be forgiven for. Number four is to be to be forgiven, we must forgive. So re- record the names of others that you need to forgive. Write them down. Number five, write the offenses of those of the above names. So those that that offended you and hurt you, write what they did to you. And number six, the most important step is list the things you need to forgive yourself for. List the things you need to forgive yourself for. The purpose of each assignment is for the following. You must recognize what and or who you're carrying in order for you to be given the separation. Deliverance must must take place for you to be set free. You must know, you know better than anyone what things you have done wrong publicly and secretly. So only you can confess your sins and ask to be forgiven of them. Also, those things people have done to hurt you that you may or may not discuss, but it's still doing its damage within. Listing their names helps you forgive them, but writing their offenses helps you overcome the offense. So no one can repeat it again. If the offense, if the offense is repeated, it can no longer hurt you. I encourage you to focus on forgiving yourself. In so many cases, people and God has forgiven us, but we are still unforgiving. We still are unforgiving toward ourselves, and we can't be free. So this is an assignment. I am sure this assignment, it won't be easy, but you will be happy you did it. My God. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. So I encourage you to do that. I'm going to proceed. Thank you, God. But I encourage you to do that. Matthew 6 and 14 reads, If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. My God. If you, if you, if you, if you forgive, forgive. If you overlook, with those, the, overlook those who sinned against you, who hurt you, who backstabbed you, who stole from you, who disrespected you. If you, if you overlook them, those who sinned against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. 
my God. Matthew 18 and 15 reads, If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the fault. If the person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. This is the the part one of the three-part series, Forgiving Others. Forgiving Others. Amen. Which take us now to the second three-part series, which is Forgiveness Toward Self. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Forgiveness toward yourself. Ask yourself the following questions. Please write them down as I read them out loud. In order to get the right answers, you must ask the right questions. Forgiveness toward yourself. The worst pain is the pain one inflicts on themselves. My God. What did I do? Number one. Number two, why did I do it? And was it intentional? Number three, who did I do it with or against? Number four, did I hurt others in the process of doing it? See, this is how you get to, to why am I, why do I feel this way about myself? You know, why do I feel like, I, if you know if you hurt someone. So this helps you get there, get to that place of why, what, who, my God, where did I do it? Number five. Number six, how did I do it? Because if you know where you've done something, how you did it, you don't want to repeat it again. That's why you're asking yourself these questions. When did I do it? Am I ashamed of it? Am I ashamed of myself? My God, will I do it again? How do I know I won't do it again? Or how do I know I will do it again? Why do I believe I won't do it? Why do I believe I will do it? Who did I see do it first? Who did I see do it last? Am I what I did? That's a good one. Was it fun? While I was doing it, did it hurt? Does it still hurt? Are you what you did? No, you're not. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Did I make amends to those that I hurt? By asking for forgiveness. So what I would say to you, my God, mm, 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 mm. thank you, Jesus. Make a sincere apology and appreciate the forgiveness of another, but forgive yourself. I cannot unlock the door to forgiveness if you won't give me the key. Though you have the key, it's not you. What's the use? Admit it, quit it, repent of it, and forget it. Yes, I did it. No, I will not do it anymore. I've asked for forgiveness. I forgave myself. It's behind me. Now I must move on. Now I must move on. Forgiveness towards self. We achieve inner health only through forgiveness. The forgiveness not only forgive the forgiveness not only of others but also of ourselves. 
by Joshua Lowe Lemon. Lemon. One of the hardest things to do is to forgive yourself. But one of the best gifts you will receive from yourself is forgiveness. One of the hardest things to do is to forgive yourself. But one of the best gifts you will receive from yourself is forgiveness. My God. Mm. Stop cutting me. Stop cutting me. The worst pain is the pain one inflicts on themselves. You see the young lady, she has a razor in her arm, and trust me, I'm not promoting this as, as, by no means necessary. I'm just using this as to show you when you have unforgiving towards yourself and you and, and you hate yourself or you hate what you've done and you just imagine that's what you're doing to yourself every time you remind yourself of I, I, I messed up, I fell short of God's glory, I, I, I cursed my children out, I, 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 I lied, I stole something, I was I deceived somebody, all of these things and, and you can't get past it. And every time you do, guess what? Every time you bring it up, you're cutting yourself, you're cutting yourself, but then you're saying, Stop cutting me, but you're the one cutting yourself. You stop cutting yourself. Stop inflicting the pain on yourself. My God. Stop tripping over the same old stuff. I remember I did a, a, on my on the prayer line, I, 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 it was a title I did. You keep tripping over the same stuff. You know the shoes is in the middle of the floor. You see the shoes. You know the shoes are there. But instead of you moving the shoes out the way, you keep tripping over the same shoes. Instead of you walking around them, guess what? You keep tripping over the same shoes. What am I saying? You keep tripping over the same old stuff. The devil don't have to use anything new because the old stuff still works. Don't keep stumbling over stumbling over things, over something that's behind you. It's in your past. It's in the past. It's done. You can't change your past, but you can change your present and your future. And how do you do that? By forgiving yourself. For what has happened, what you've done, how you've hurt yourself, how you've hurt others, you must forgive and continue to run your race by letting it go. How do I forgive? How do I forgive myself? By letting it go. By letting it go. By letting it go. Philippians 3 and 13 reads, No, dear brothers and sisters, I am still not all I should be, but I am focusing all my energies on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Philippians 3 and 13. No, dear brothers and sisters, I am not all I should be. I'm not perfect. And I'm not all I should be. But I am focusing all my energy on this one thing. Forgetting the past, that that is behind me. And looking forward to what lies ahead. So I encourage you to let it go. Let it go. Forgive yourself today. Freedom is a choice. Freedom is a choice. 
as you're looking at this bird, the bird is in the cage and the door is open. Even when the door is open, the prisoner sometimes refuses to leave. Choose to be free today. How? Forgive, 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 forgive. Forgive. Amen. When you forgive, you are free to love yourself, and you're free to love others. Forgiving yourself is the first step to loving yourself. And I truly agree with that. Forgive today. Because tomorrow is not promised. So let's choose today that we will forgive. Who? Cool. Forgive others and forgive ourselves. Newsflash. I came to enlighten you on today. And I hope I have thus far. We are human. We are not perfect. We are alive. We try things. We make mistakes. We stumble. We fall, we get hurt, we rise again, we try again, we keep learning, we keep growing, and we are thankful for the priceless opportunity called life. 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 We are human. We are not perfect. We are alive. We try things. We make mistakes. We stumble. We fall. We get hurt. We rise again. We try again. We keep learning. We keep growing. And we are thankful for this priceless opportunity called life. Life. It's all about forgiveness. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Ah, mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. None of me, all of him, less of me, more of him. Have your way, God, in this place, on this line, on this webinar, God. I thank you. Now we're at the third part of this three-part series, Forgiveness from God. Forgiveness from God. My God, let's talk about it. Ask yourself the following questions. Please write them down as I read them out loud. In order to get the right, the right answers, you must ask the right questions. Number one, did I do something to offend God? Did I do something to offend God? Number two, what did I do? Number three, why did I do it? Number four, who did I do it with? Ha, ah, that's a good question. Number five, where was the sin committed? Six, am I embarrassed? Seven, did I enjoy doing it? Eight, how did I feel afterwards? Ah, you can feel so good in doing your sin. Hey, shut up about that, y'all. But afterwards, conviction comes. My God, how did I feel afterwards? Number nine, what did I do afterwards? Did I stop attending?
between church services? Mm. Number 10, do you feel like a hypocrite? Do you feel like a hypocrite? Number 12, have you asked for forgiveness? 13, do you believe you are forgiven? 14, have you did it again? If so, why? If not, why not? 15, do you feel you let God down? 16, do you have the strength to get up again? 17, do you know God forgives? And 18, do you accept his forgiveness? Do you accept God's forgiveness? Do you? Do you accept God's forgiveness? God loves us. He knows we're going to make mistakes. He knows that we will fall short of his glory. But have you confessed of your sins? Because that is how you get to it. That's how you figure it out. My God, have you confessed of your sins? My Jesus. This is Ah, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. John 8, 1 1 through 11. John 8, 1 through 11. Read. Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives. But early the next morning, he was back again at the temple. A crowd soon gathered, and he sat down and taught them. As he was speaking, the teachers of religious teaching, as he was speaking, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. My God, hey, oh Jesus! Put, they put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. They kept demanding an answer. So he stood up again and he and said, all right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down and again, stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. My God. Oh, go and sin no more. And I use this, and it, 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 this, 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 this picture was just, it just spoke to me because, my God, my God, yes, it's some things you've done. Yes, it's some things people have done to you. Yes, you have accusers. Yes, they have went before God and said, you know you ought to get up for what she's done. And Jesus said, my God, more shit than I will say, y'all. All right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Guess what? We all sin. We've all, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, we've all all fell short of his glory. But God, but God, and Jesus said, neither do I go and sin 
no more. Can you accept God's forgiveness on today? My Jesus. Well, confess of your sin. And this is something that I, I, I have in the book. I admit my sin. I repent of my sin. I ask for forgiveness. God has forgiven me. I know I am forgiven. I am free to start over. I'm free to start over. Get up. Go to God. Talk with God. Admit your sin. Repent of your sin. Your sins. Pray and ask God for forgiveness. Listen to God. Ah. Go and sin no more. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Micah 7 19 reads, Once, once again you will have compassion on us. You will trample our sins under your feet and throw them in the depth of the sea. My God. Once again, how many times have I had to go before God and say, Lord, forgive me? Once again, you will have compassion towards me. You will trample over my sin, trample, oh, trample my Jesus, <laughs> oh my God, my sin under your feet and throw them in the depths of the sea. If he'll do it for you, he'll do it for me. He'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. Freedom is a choice of forgiving. Freedom is a choice of forgiving. He cleanses, delivers, and sets you free. My God, no longer caged in your own prison. No longer, hallelujah, of being a victim to your circumstances. No longer, because I choose. I have a choice to be free by forgiving you and forgiving myself and accepting the, the forgiveness of God and extending it to you. I choose to be cleansed, delivered, and set free on this day. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad therein. Amen. Thank you, God. And here is the message from God to us. I forgive you. All is well. All is well. Move on, my daughter. Move on. Be free. Be free. Amen. Thank you, God. And this will conclude, well, and this will conclude our session six of the 12. And I encourage you to write free down as an acronym. And the S is forgive, the R is redeem, the E is elevate, and the other E is evolve and enjoy. Forgive, be redeemed, elevate, elevate yourself, allow God to elevate you. Evolve and enjoy. I can, I will forgive myself, others, and their offenses so I can peel to heal. This will conclude. Our sixth session of the 12, may God, may the peace of God be with you until we meet again. Stay peaceful, prayerful, and praiseful. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and God bless. Love you all.